again and welcome to our fifth video about AI. I'm Elach Malik and I work in interactive pedagogy at the Wharton School. And I'm Professor Ethan Malik, a professor at the Wharton School. And in this video we're going to talk about when your students use AI. And we're actually going to talk about this in two different ways. We're going to talk about giving your students AI prompts, so basically having them interact with the AI that, in a way that you want. And then we're also going to talk about using AI as a tool for class, how you accomplish things. And I've actually made all my classes AI mandatory, so I have some experience on how to do this. It's working out very well, but there's some things you need to know. So first, there's some general things you should make sure your students know about AI and are familiar with before they start working with these systems. There are a few things you need to make sure your students are aware of before they interact with the AI. First, the AI is not a real person, but it can definitely feel like one. It can invent things or hallucinate, so they're responsible for their work and they should critically evaluate any output that the AI gives them. To get the most out of the interaction, they should push the AI. They should ask questions, clear up areas of confusion, and generally take the lead with any AI interaction. They have to remember that they're in control. If the AI gets stuck in a loop, they can tell it to move on and give the AI direction. So that issue of accountability is really important because as we mentioned in our very first video, AI is essentially undetectable. So you may think you can detect AI writing, but the tools and software that's supposed to do it are very limited and ultimately will not be successful. And there's both theoretically and technical arguments why that's the case. They often misidentify people as using AI when they don't. You can't just ask AI to identify AI writing. It will make things up. So you really cannot detect AI-based plagiarism, and of course what plagiarism is becomes an open question. Is it plagiarizing to ask an AI to comment on your outline? Is it plagiarizing to ask an AI to help you with a sentence that you're stuck on? Is it plagiarizing to ask it to help generate ideas for your project that you then build on? We don't know the answer to these things, right? So you have to be aware that you have to define the usage policy for your class. In my class where AI is mandatory, I make people responsible for the output of their products. So I expect them to get the facts right, to give data, to give information to the AI to make good decisions. I also require them to give me all the prompts they use and to write a reflection paragraph at the end of any assignment where they use AI, talk about what AI was good for and what was bad for. So you do need to have really clear policies, but be aware that there really is no tool to detect AI cheating. In an assignment where I actually asked my students to cheat with AI, what I found is that with just a few prompts in the way that we've taught in the earlier videos to do prompting interactively with the AI, it becomes undetectable and doesn't read like AI writing anymore. So it's very hard to detect and you should not plan on being able to know when students are using AI and when they're not in a sophisticated way in class. So given that, you might want to think about how to embrace it. And one way to embrace AI is to think about giving AI-based assignments. One AI-based assignment that's very exciting and potentially transformative is using AI as a tutor. We know from many studies that high dosage tutoring at least two or three times a week that is sustained dramatically improves outcomes, but this kind of tutoring is available to almost no one. AI can act as a personal tutor, drawing on your personal knowledge, what you already know, and helping you work through problems. You might want to consider using the AI in a flipped classroom. In the flipped classroom, students engage with material outside of class so that they can actively engage in discussion and collaboration with their peers inside of class. The AI tutor can help them gain initial information and some foundational knowledge so that they come to class prepared to fully engage with the material. So many instructors are already reporting that their students are actively using AI to teach them concepts, usually with something like, explain this like I'm 10. And while that's great that they're turning to AI for explanations, there are more sophisticated ways of doing tutoring. And this prompt that we developed 
provides some of those methods. So I'm going to paste that prompt into GPT-4 in ChatGPT. Again, you could use this prompt in Bing, and we provide the text of the prompt below in the show notes if you want to practice it yourself. And you may have to experiment to make it work with other systems like BARD. In this case, we're choosing GPT-4 because it's best at sort of long form answers, but Bing in creative mode would also work very well for this because that uses GPT-4 again. And if this is confusing, you can watch back at our previous videos where we talk more about the differences in these models. So again, this is a well-written prompt in that it explains who somebody is. You're an upbeat, uh, encouraging tutor, which gives context to the AI to work from. And it's going to help students understand concepts. You'll notice there's lots of explanation here. This is a very sophisticated prompt. Students don't need these kind of prompts. They can interact with the system on its own, but this as an assignment can help get students mostly on the same page. Though do remember, everybody who runs this prompt will get different answers. So I'm going to hit enter here and it's introducing itself. Uh, hello, I'm your friendly AI tutor, ChatGPT, and I'm here to help you in your learning journey. What topic do you want to discuss? And it'd be great if you would let me know about your level of experience and please ask me questions. So it's encouraging that back and forth question asking. So what topic should we say we want tutoring on? Uh, retrieval practice and learning. And what, what grade level are we? We are seniors in high school. Okay, so now it's going to tutor this. It's saying retrieving practice is fascinating and a valuable technique for boosting learning. And it's going to ask me for some details. It's asking me what we are currently understand. So again, this is all in that initial prompt. It has all these instructions already in it. Uh, great prompt design, by the way. What should we say about what we know already? We could say we, we only heard about this topic. It's important to notice too, that what it's drawing on is prior knowledge. Because students learn based on what they already know, what this prompt is doing is acting like an experienced tutor, understanding what the student already knows in order to create better explanations. And I'm saying I didn't really listen in the class that day. So it's giving me a, a comforting answer and it's explaining how it's doing this. And again, now it's starting to use analogies and it's spontaneously deciding to do things that talking about analogies of our brain working like a book. And it's talking about uh, in a really rhetorical friendly way. So you can see the difference in that prompt design that says this is a friendly tutor. It feels friendly. It feels nice to work with. And you can see it's starting a back and forth conversation. Now, again, AI is not magical. It's not better than the best teacher. It is, you know, may make up some of this information. So your students may learn incorrect points. So you need to be careful with how this is used. Now, these systems are getting better and better all the time. Um, but we're not ready for tutors to replace teachers, and I don't think we ever will be. Uh, but this AI tutor can act as a valuable tool for getting some of information, but you should plan on you know, checking carefully on these outputs and maybe giving your students some warnings about where this works and where it doesn't. So that's one example of an AI-based assignment. But you also can go beyond that, right? You should assume that your students are going to be using AI for all their assignments. What are some implications of that? This is especially true of writing assignments. And so you should test all of your current assignments and see how the AI does on those assignments, the depth of knowledge that the AI has, and what it gets right and what it gets wrong. Additionally, you can try using a more active learning classroom in which the students learn about a topic outside of class and inside of class, everyone collaborates and everyone takes part in a discussion. So there are upsides and downsides to AI in education. I mean, on the downside, things like essays, which are important tools for learning, are no longer as useful because you should assume people are cheating at a very high level. And even if they're not cheating, they're using AI to get ideas and generate concepts that you might want them to do themselves. So we are losing some things as a result. We may have to make changes. If essays are an important part of what you do, or writing is an important task you need to teach people, you may need to do more of those writing assignments in class where AI isn't accessible and give different assignments outside of class. And these changes are significant. They're real and we have to consider what is happening to education, but we can't put our heads in the sand and pretend that people aren't using AI and this tool is not widely available. It is available to 169 countries in the form of Bing, uh, the most advanced AI, even more for Google's BARD, and it is out there. So there are ways of turning this to advantage. Education is very flexible and we finally have a tool that really can make individual tutoring and personalized examples and all of these cool things possible and available, but we need to embrace it and embrace what's good at while also being aware of the downsides and figure out how to work around them. We're just at the beginning of this quest and this process. We hope these videos have given you an introduction to how we're thinking about these things and some ways to use AI positively in classrooms and other kinds of settings, as well as some concerns to think about in the future. I'm Lila Malik. Thank you again for watching this series. And again, check out the notes for prompts and assignments. And I'm Ethan Malik. Thank you so much for watching. Please continue to explore AI. There's so much left to learn.